Hello and welcome to Video Revealed. I'm Colin Smith and this is your place for professional video production techniques. The subject of this reveal? Picture in Picture in Premiere Pro. Now Picture in Picture has some very good uses. I would never overdo it. Sometimes it's good for tutorials, although I personally will caution you that if you have two things to look at all the time, it can be a little distracting. So I would use that judiciously. I would only bring up that PIP when I needed it. And that's what it's called in the industry, a PIP, picture in picture. Fortunately, Premiere Pro has great built-in presets and a manual way to move anything around on the screen. Let's go have a look. All right, so I have this footage here from uh, Waiting for Lightning, and I want to put this gentleman on the top track on V2 in a pip. So I've already set an in and out point. I'm just going to drag that down into my timeline. And of course, he's a full-size video, so he covers everything underneath. Now, there's several ways to do this. I'll show you the manual way. First, we need to select this. So click on it once, go to the effects controls, and you'll notice in motion, if I twirl this down, we've got scale and position information. This little icon right here has a little meaning to it. Anytime you see something like that, when you click on it, you'll notice over on the right hand side, you get these blue handles, and that means you can now move this and scale it. So I'm holding the shift key down, scaling that down, and then dropping him, let's put him in the upper right hand side. No rendering, hit play, and we're ready to go. See, told you it was easy. Any position, any video, any format, anywhere, and we can move it around. Now, let's go look at a few uh, other gotchas and, and presets inside here. Now, we're not animating this guy, we're just literally placing him in the top uh, right hand corner and that's great if that's what we want to do. Let me go and reset the position and the scale and put him back. I also want to show you that if you don't click on that little guy over here, let's say you just come over into the screen and double click on the video, you'll do both. You'll select the track and you'll click on that and you'll be able to move it. So. If you don't like twirling that down, just move your mouse into the program monitor, double click, grab one of the handles, hold shift, and do it that way. All right. And then let's look at working on presets. So again, we have to start by selecting this um, and going to our effects. And they're in the presets, but if you go to the search field and type PIP for PIP, you'll see a whole bunch of picture in picture in here. And they're all identical. They all deal with the four quadrants of the screen. So let's just go to the top lower left ones. That's 25% lower left. PIP, 25% lower left. I'll drag this over to here and what happens? He's 25% in the lower left. I hit play and he's playing back. Let me undo that. Let's look at the next one. This is PIP 25% lower left scaled down from full. Hmm. Let me start by bringing this over to the, the beginning, drag this down. You don't see anything happen, but if we hit play, watch what happens. This is an animated preset. So presets can contain animation keyframes or not. Anything that says scale down or scale up or spin in or spin out actually have those keyframes inside them. If you double click on one of these presets, um, they can have a description. So you'll see the description says 25% picture in picture starts full frame scales down to 25% into the lower left position. And you'll notice that this type is set to scale. That means that the keyframes, if we open up the keyframes here, you'll notice that we have keyframes set that scale. That means that whoever created this original animation and a preset, they didn't have to know the in and out point of that video. They could create it based on one, two seconds, 10 seconds, whatever. When scale is set, when you apply it, it scales it from the beginning keyframe to the last keyframe based on what your input is. Oh, and this is, I don't even know how many seconds, but it's on port, uh, both sides. If I wanted this to occur, occur earlier, I could drag these keyframes earlier and to line them up, hold the shift key while you move them. Now he's going to move to that lower portion faster. Let me just make that even faster. So there we go. There's 25% pip into the lower. And if you didn't like 
the percentage, you could change the scale and maybe bring that up a little bit. So now he scales from there down to there, and that's 55%. Just again, remember to, sh to hold the shift key when you're moving, because sometimes you can actually create two keyframes that are one frame apart, and you'll get a little jerky animation in there. All right, let's reset all of this and go back to the uh, beginning. Let me get rid of all these keyframes, reset that, and let's look at spin in. Woo, drag that down there. He's nowhere to be found, and he spins into the bottom corner. So picture in picture, pretty darn easy to do. Uh, works with any format, no rendering whatsoever, and you can have it in any corner. If I had, if I had four videos and I chose lower left, lower right upper right, upper left, and then threw them on there, I could stick four quadrants on there, either animated or static. Picture in picture, pretty easy way to, to uh, work inside Premiere Pro, built-in presets, or do the stuff manually. Well, if you found this informative, and hopefully you did, please click on the subscribe link to Video Revealed, and if you're not already an Adobe Creative Cloud user, get on over to adobe.com and download your free 30-day trial. Till next time, I'm Colin Smith, and it's my job to get you looking your best.